YouTube and the internet is teaching you to EQ your vocals completely wrong. So when I first went in to learn how to EQ my voice, they all said boost the bass by six decibels, reduce the mids by six decibels, boost the treble by six decibels. And this is what it sounds like. Does this sound good to you? No, this sounds like complete trash. So the first mistake the internet tells you is boosting and cutting all those frequencies by a huge amount. That is not what you want to do. The second mistake is they teach you to sweep and find bad frequencies, but there's some things they don't tell you about this. It's the right technique, but they're not telling you how to do it properly. So let's get into that. So basically they tell you to boost the heck out of the bass, boost the heck out of the treble, pull the mids down and then sweep, find every bad frequency and pull it down. Find one, pull it down, find one, pull it down. And next thing you know, your EQ looks something like this. And this is what it sounds like, which is unbelievably horrible. If you follow the instructions on the internet, you end up with something like that. First, we're gonna start by EQing my voice, which should give you a good idea of how this works. And then I'm gonna give you a bunch of tips and tricks on how to EQ your voice and make it sound perfect. So if you're actually hearing a bad frequency when you play your recording back, you do wanna find it and get rid of it, but you do not wanna search and find every single frequency that sounds bad because when you make this narrow band, you pull it up really high and you drag it across every single frequency is going to sound bad so you want to listen to your recording and when you hear that specific frequency that doesn't sound good memorize that and sweep until you find that specific frequency and then pull that down and i'm going to show you how to do that right now so when i make this really narrow band and i pull this up by 10 decibels and i sweep this across here every single frequency is going to sound bad, which is what they don't tell you. So you're not supposed to do this to look for the things that sound bad because everything is gonna sound bad. So I hear a resonating bass frequency, so I'm gonna try and find it, all right? So I'm gonna go like, hey, hey, ah. Uh... And once I hit right about 110, I can hear that re resonating bass. So I actually wanna cut that out. I wanna get rid of that one bad bass frequency. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull that down by about two to three decibels. I'm gonna widen that curve just a little bit. And hey, that bad ba bass frequency has now been removed from my recording. And I don't currently hear any other bad frequencies that, when I get, that I wanna get rid of. So I'm not gonna sweep for any more. I heard one nasty frequency, I found it, I removed it, I am good to go. Now let's get into regular EQing just to make your voice sound that much better and shape the sound into exactly what we want. So this is gonna be a really quick rundown of how to EQ your vocals. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is cut off the bass that's deeper than the human voice. That way, if there's any room rumbles or an air conditioner running, it's gonna get rid of that. So right around 60 Hertz, we are gonna make what they call a high pass filter, which allows the high sounds to pass through, but cuts the bass off. So right about 60 Hertz, and you probably don't hear any difference in sound. You don't want to. We don't wanna cut out any of the bass frequencies of the human voice, but we wanna get rid of the ones that are lower than the human voice, which we just did. So I hear a little bit of bass, a little bit of boxiness. So I'm gonna come over to right about 500 Hertz, and I'm gonna make maybe a 1.5 or a two decibel cut, and that really just kind of cleans the sound up a little bit. I mean, that sounds a little bit better, right? We got rid of that little bit of boxiness I was hearing, but it still sounds a little bit too bassy to me. So I'm gonna come over to like around 100, 120 Hertz. Now, if you need more bass, this is where you would boost the bass up. But in my case, I'm still hearing a little bit too much. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down by maybe like one to two decibels. And my voice sounds a little more intelligible. It got rid of those bassy frequencies I didn't like. I still hear just a little bit of a resonating bass frequency, but we'll take care of that later. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, I think we need to add a little bit of high end, a little bit of that air or sparkle to this particular microphone. So I'm gonna go over to about 12,000 Hertz and I'm gonna boost this by maybe two to three decibels. Now on the Shure SM7B, it's a very dark sounding microphone. So you can go up to maybe like six on this particular microphone. I don't like to change the way the microphone sounds too much, but right around 12,000, we're gonna go with a three decibel boost. Now, I feel like we maybe need a little bit more mids or a little bit more presence, so we're gonna come over to around 2,500. I'm gonna boost that by about two decibels, and then I'm gonna kind of sweep it over this way, but be careful, once you get start getting around five or 6,000 RPM, not RPMs, Hertz, <laughs> Once you start getting over around the 6,000 to 5,000 hertz range, when you say things like celly cells, seashells, celly cells, seashells, 
that can really bring out a lot of that extra sibilance where the S sound sound really harsh. So you don't want to boost too much around 6,000. So I find around maybe 2,500 hertz, I can do like a one to two decibel boost. And you know what? That's sounding really good. That's that's brought up the highs, gave me some of that sparkly air sound. It got, gave me a little bit of extra bite in the mids. We got rid of the boxy sounds. We reduced a little bit of that resonating bass. But if I'm still hearing that nasty resonating bass frequency, that's when I want to start doing my sweep. So, okay, we're going to just go. Aww. And then, of course, when I find it, I'm going to go ahead and just pull that down by, you know, one, somewhere between one to two to three decibels and get rid of that nasty bass frequency. Now, I do think maybe I'm hearing a little bit of a weirdness in the high end. So I'm going to go ahead and bring one more of these up, make a nice narrow band. And I'm going to just start talking until I hear something a little weird. It was somewhere, it was somewhere in, okay, that, that's starting to sound a little strange right in there, like around right about 1.6. So I'm going to go ahead and do like a minus two, and I'm just going to go ahead and widen that just a little bit, and bam, there is my EQ. This should sound just about perfect. Now, everybody's voice is different. On some microphones, you may need to do the opposite of what I'm doing here. Now, let's just say you're a person who has a bright sounding microphone and you kind of have a higher pitch voice. You might come over here to around like nine or 10 or 8,000 decibels, and you might actually pull this down by two to three to six decibels if you need to get rid of some of that brightness. So if your voice is really sounding high pitched or really harsh or just hard to listen to, that can get very fatiguing in the ears. So on, on some microphones and some voices, you may need to come over here and reduce the treble. If you're saying S sounds and you're hearing some really harsh frequencies and you don't have a de -esser, Come to about 6,000 hertz. Listen to the silly cell seashells, silly cell seashells, silly cell seashells. You can hear how harsh that is. So you might want to go ahead and make a somewhat narrow band right around 6,000. Bring that down by 2 to 3 to 6 decibels. And that's going to really cut out some of those harsh S sounds when you say your S's. Now, I told you to make a cut around 500. Like, if it's sounding boxy, you're going to want to make that cut around 500. Now, if the, the microphone's not sounding bassy, it's not sounding boxy, don't worry about that cut right there, right? You may not need that cut. Or if you're not sounding extra bassy, do not drop down the bass, right? You might actually want to boost the bass by 1 or 2 or 3 decibels around 100 or 120 hertz. Depending on if you have a higher pitch voice, a deeper voice what kind of microphone you have, the type of room resonance your room picks up. There's a lot of variables to this. If your voice is sounding a little bit nasally and you need to cut that out, I would come around 4,000 hertz, make a nice little one or two decibel cut, and just kind of move that back and forth a little bit until you notice, hey, the nasally sounds have been reduced. If you need to add a little warmth in, you might want to come over around 200 to 300 hertz and make a little boost by like one to two decibels. That's about it right there. On some people's voices, that's going to add some nice warmth in because the human voice for at least a male, this is kind of where the majority of your voice lies is somewhere in this range right here. But you don't want to over boost or cut too much of anything. So one really easy thing to do is make one point on your EQ about 12,000. Make one about 6,000, make one about 2,500, make one somewhere between like 500 and 550, make another one somewhere between like 150 to maybe 200, make one about 100, and then do your bass cutoff right here. And then you can just raise or lower each one of these until you like the way it sounds. That's kind of an easy way to do it. So for me, with my voice in my room, my finished product ends up looking a little bit like this. I hope you guys found this helpful, and I hope you have a much better understanding of how to EQ your vocals. Now, let's get into some other really important information or things you need to think about when EQing your vocals. So here we go. If a microphone sounds way too bassy, if there's too much mud in those bass frequencies, it can actually be very hard to understand a person's voice. So sometimes, even though those bass frequencies, those nice, warm, bassy sounds might sound pretty good overall, it might make it also hard for some people to understand at times, especially if they have hearing problems 
or if they're listening in a very noisy environment. So sometimes it's better to cut down the bass and bring up the highs a little bit to make it easier to understand, as long as bringing up the highs aren't making it sound, sound bright and fatiguing. You do not want the highs to be ear piercing or sound fatiguing to your listeners' ears. If the microphone is too bright, that will turn people off and make them leave your videos or not want to listen to your recordings. So we're not really trying to change the way the microphone sounds very much. We're just trying to basically make so the microphone sounds nice and so your voice is really good and easy to understand for the person. Your recording should sound so good that it's almost ready to post before you start working on it. If your recording sounds really bad and you need to EQ or you need to do something to make it sound better, well you may have a problem with your recording space or your gear and you may need to change something up. You want to get a nice recording. Now, my room does have some nasty bass frequencies, right? I do need to remove some nasty bass frequencies. That's just the acoustics of my room and there's nothing I can do about that. So there may be a few things that you can't help in your recording space, but for the most part, you want it to be 90% of the way there before you start EQing or adding your effects. But if you notice, when I am cutting some frequencies out to get rid of those bass frequencies that sound bad and make me a little harder to understand, I'm only doing some very small cuts by maybe 1, 1 1.5, or 2 decibels, which is not very much at all. So it's not a big problem, it's just a very small problem with my room. If there's a huge problem with your room, you're going to maybe want to look at moving your your recording area to a different spot of the room maybe getting some room treatment because the room is one of the most important things you could go out and buy a twenty thousand dollar microphone and if you're recording in the room that's got a lot of acoustic problems that recording will never sound good no matter how good your gear is so the room is the number one thing to getting a good recording once you have an overall good recording, then you can EQ, compress, limit, maybe add a DS or in a couple of other little things just to sweeten it up and add that extra 5 or 10% of perfectness to get it sounding exactly how you want. So if you're needing to majorly edit your recordings to make them sound good, then you have a major problem somewhere with your room or your gear and you need to fix that first. Anyways, I think that's going to wrap this one up. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you drop down the video's description or check out the pinned comment, you'll find some affiliate links for Amazon. If you need the new camera, microphone, lighting, any kind of podcast or content creation gear, or if you need any audio plugins, there is affiliate links for some awesome Waves plugins down there as well. So check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, lighten out. Have a good day. See ya.